Hey guys, it's Ryan. In this video, we're going to talk about hemostasis, which is the process of causing bleeding to stop. And there are two different components to hemostasis. There's the platelet pathway, which this video is going to be about, and the coagulation cascade, which is what the second video will be about. Now the most important thing you can go home with from this video is that those two processes are separate. The platelet pathway is one process and the coagulation cascade is an entirely different process. Both of which though um, work hand in hand to cause a clot to form. So you might have seen stuff like this, just crazy pathway drawings, bunch of numbers, random things to memorize. We're going to try to cut, uh, cut it down and simplify it so that we can um, understand it in more bite-sized pieces. So hemostasis has four phases. Uh, I spoke about two of them already. The first phase of hemostasis, so you get cut and the blood vessels in that area are also injured. So to prevent your blood from just spilling out all over the place, we have a vascular phase, which is vasoconstriction, where the affected vessel uh, constricts or contracts to try to limit blood loss. Uh, that happens very quickly. And then we have the formation of a platelet plug, which is primary hemostasis. And then we have the coagulation cascade, which is secondary hemostasis, which is what our second video will focus on. And then we finally have the fibrinolytic phase, which involves plasmid, an, enzy an enzyme in blood, which cuts the fibrin mesh and dissolves the clot after everything um, is taken care of. So again, primary hemostasis involves platelets, secondary hemostasis involves coagulation. They are two separate things. So for the platelet pathway, our first uh, step in the process is adhesion, where platelets have to adhere to the vessel wall. So um, we know that endothelium lines the inside of each blood vessel and endothelial damage causes the release of von Willebrand factor from the endothelium. So we have platelets, which are these little um, purple circles here, and then when we have the damage, we get von Willebrand factor that is expressed and released from the endothelium, which then attaches to circulating platelets via this glycoprotein 1B. So now the platelets are adhered to the endothelium. Note that uh, adhesion also occurs between exposed collagen of the endothelium and a complex known as glycoprotein 1A slash 2A, um, but we, it's a little more complicated than we have to get right now. So the important thing is for adhesion to the vessel wall, which is our first step, we have a platelet, we have von Willebrand factor, and they're connected by glycoprotein 1B. So now the second step is activation, which is where the platelets uh, change shape. So binding to von Willebrand factor really excites these platelets, and so they get activated and grow these kind of legs. Not only that, but they secrete activators that include thromboxane A2 and ADP which further activate other circulating platelets. So now you have a bunch of platelets that have these um, sort of pseudopod-like things, and they're all secreting these activator compounds, which are uh, activating other platelets. And so we're just getting a bunch of uh, platelets that are activated, and once they are so, they begin to express another glycoprotein, which is known as a 2B3A complex. And so aggregation, which is the third A of our platelet pathway, means that the platelets are going to be aggregated to each other. And so they'll begin to um, basically flow through the blood and they secrete this glycoprotein. And then we also have fibrinogen, which is floating through the bloodstream and it sticks to this glycoprotein complex, kind of like Velcro. And since Velcro is super sticky, the platelets begin sticking to each other. So now we have aggregation 
at the site of this injury, which is perfect for a platelet plug to form. Keep in mind that as more uh, aggregate to each other, they also get activated, releasing more thromboxane and ADP, and this positive feedback loop continues. So the end result of primary hemostasis in the platelet pathway is this thing right here, a platelet plug composed of many, many platelets, fibrinogen, and tethered to the endothelium via von Willebrand factor. And that's pretty much it for the pathway. So now we have antiplatelet medications like aspirin, clopridogrel, abcixumab. You might have heard of some of these. Why are they prescribed? Well, maybe if a patient has a history of a stroke um, and or placement of a coronary artery stent um, to prevent formation of inappropriate platelet plugs. We're trying to inhibit the whole process we just talked about. So what kind of drugs could we design to block certain points of that platelet pathway? Well, for example, aspirin uh, can block the synthesis of thromboxane 2 in platelets by inhibiting the COX-1 enzyme that catalyzes the reaction to make this compound. And so it's blocking, so aspirin is basically blocking the activation the second step of the platelet pathway. Now we also have a drug called clopridogrel, also known as Plavix, and this drug competes with ADP at its receptor to block also activation. So aspirin and clopidogrel are um, attacking these two compounds involved in the activation process where platelets are activating each other. Now we also have a drug, abcixumab, which is a monoclonal antibody, and that binds to this complex right here, glycoprotein 2B3A, to block the third step, the aggregation step of the platelet pathway. Now we can also test platelets for their quantity or number or their quality, the, the way that they're functioning. Now, what would we test for with a platelet test? So for uh, a platelet count, which we're we, um, testing for the number of platelets circulating in the blood, that would be used for if someone had thrombocytopenia, which is a low platelet count common in HIV or leukemia patients. And um, for quality, we could test for bleeding time, where you, you know, have a um, cut on your finger or something and you see how long it takes to clot. Um, this would be to test for platelet function. So say if a patient was suspected to have von Willebrand's disease, you could um, do, a plate, uh, do a bleeding time test to try to rule out that um, diagnosis. Because von Willebrand's disease, of course, affects von Willebrand factor, which is an important uh, component in the adhesion phase of the platelet pathway. So you can kind of see how all of this ties into um, those three steps we talked about during the platelet pathway. All right, guys, that's all I have for this video. So stay tuned for the next video where we tackle a very complex topic, the coagulation cascade. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.